right, guys. This is going to be the last episode for the MLS 6.2 tutorial for Football Manager 23. I decided to go ahead and have one more episode. I've been getting quite a few comments and questions on things that I thought I covered. Maybe I didn't cover it as well. So I'm going to cover trading again. I'm going to cover the DP contract buy down. I'm going to cover a couple other things and I'm also going to have some changes and additions from the tutorial videos that aren't in FM 23 and a couple of key factors I want you to make sure you understood so stay tuned it's going to be a few videos that are going to be parsed together but hopefully it will work out just fine so anyway thanks for watching guys and stay tuned all right everybody the first thing i wanted to make sure that people were were, were aware of is that in real life st louis city for whatever reason is in a western conference However, in Football Manager 23, we are in the Eastern Conference. It just, it blows my mind. I don't understand why they did that, but, you know, that it is what it is. I can't change that. Another thing I wanted to cover, in my tutorials, I said that Sacramento was the leading forerunner in becoming the next MLS expansion team. And I'm here to show you that San Diego is going to be the next one and they debut in 2025 now I don't know if when they're going to have it in football manager but it's gonna be San Diego and not Sacramento so I want to make sure you're aware of that one thing that I didn't cover in my videos was the league's cup in real life this just changed not that long ago and let me see here the league's cup all right, I actually just had the draw here coming up in my St. Louis City save, so it's kind of cool. The League's Cup basically is all the teams in the MLS and all the teams in Liga MX are in a tournament. Everybody's invited. Matter of fact, just for participating, you get $100,000. So if you don't win a game, you've earned $100,000 just for being in this cup. Now, there's some really cool after effects of this. Basically... Liga MX and MLS went to FIFA and said, hey, you know, the North American Champions League, while it's all cool and everything, we just don't get the money that all the other champion leagues get. And part of the reason for that is because we don't have the sponsorships that the Euro, you know, UEFA League has or the African Nations have. You know, there's only basically two countries that are going to sponsor this, and that's the USA and Mexico, because let's be honest, we're the only two countries that are, have a shot at winning this thing. There's a lot of other countries that participate in this but they don't donate that much money so we are the lowest paid champions league in the world so because of this league's cup it helps give more money to these teams that don't win the champions league matter of fact if you win the, the champions league you'll make less money than if you play and lose your first game in the fifa club world cup it's just ridiculous the amount of money that you don't get and it's not very popular a lot of that's because usa soccer is not that popular and not much we can do but anyhow the league's cup basically you get fifty thousand dollars for a win and each stage you advance you get more money and when you win you get a million dollars i won it last year with st louis city it was really cool we won almost two million dollars in total which is really really good but not only that three teams make it into the champions league this year so they have a lot more bids on display that i didn't cover in my tutorial videos because i didn't realize that they had this in there now next year i'll update it and i'll have everything good to go but i just want to make sure that you knew that the league's cup is in football manager 23 this year just like in real life now in case you're wondering it starts let me see my first game is july and it runs through I think the end of August it's only like a month long and it's boom 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 you have games after games after games and yeah doing some friendlies but you have a lot of games and the more you win the more games you have and then now I'm in the Champions League and it's just my team's gonna be really really tired but anyhow the League's Cup is definitely in Football Manager 23 this year all right another thing I wanted to cover just to reiterate estimated trade values all right, this is where you go to find out when you're trying to trade away or when you're receiving draft picks. All right, 
In 2025, the first round draft picks, their estimated value at $240,000, million. Now, as the draft gets closer and the players have all been announced on who's going to be in a draft, that could change a little bit. It could go up to $2 million. It could go you know, down to 200000 It just depends on how many players are in it and whatnot. That's just the average, all right? The last player that's usually picked is usually only worth the two hundred forty. Now, the top player, the first round pick overall, is usually the one that's worth $1.2 million. All right? So just keep that in mind. It's just kind of like, hey, this is how much the picks are worth right now. So you can use that as trade bait and whatnot. So keep that in mind when you're trading. Another thing I wanted to cover is the draft dates are always here. All right? Once we get closer to the super draft, that will show up here too and you'll know the draft dates. They're never the same, you know, every year they're always different, but this is where you go to find them. All right. Another thing I wanted to cover is the B team. In my videos, I said that there's Liga, there's the MLS Next and MLS Next Pro. In real life, they have leagues now, so your B team and your academy teams get to play other teams. They have competitions and tournaments and everything else. It's not in Football Manager 23 this year, so I apologize for that, but it's not. That means you have to do friendly matches. <laughs> you have to schedule them yourself or set your staff members to do so. But just keep in mind, they will not play games unless you have friendly scheduled and unless you put them in your senior team, and we're going to cover that here in just a second. I wanted to go over, I've always harped on utilizing your B team appropriately. What that means is make sure that you play your B team players that have full time, or not full time contracts, that have regular senior contracts. That way you can let them play with the, the main team. That doesn't mean you have to move them up and down, it just means you have to register them for that game. So what happens is for the next game, I currently have 27 players registered. You want to go in here and filter your B team. And I always put unavailable and not at club. That way you don't hit the on loan players and there's less people to go through. All right. Now, oh my God, will you get off the filter? There we go. Okay. Basically, let's say I want David Bravo to play. I just click on here. And as long as this doesn't go over six and this doesn't go over six, you're good to go. All right. That means that I can play that player, but they have to have a contract. You'll notice like Sergio Rivas, I can't play him because I didn't give him a contract. He has a full-time contract still. All right. So only the players that have big boy contracts basically are the ones that I can play. See, Tapia, I didn't give him one either, you know, but I could pretty much select a lot of players as long as I'm at 30 now, all right? So these have SMS contracts, General Adidas contracts, and whatnot, all right? But that's how you do it, and then you just hit Confirm, and they'll be registered for the next game. And you can do that for each game, all right? That's a better way to utilize your B team. Instead of moving players up and down, you don't have to do that. The players that I keep on my senior team are ones that have the highest potential that I want to play and get more game time coming off the bench. But every now and then I'll bring these players up and rotate them. That way they get some game time too with the senior team because it does help their development. All right, that's pretty much all the changes and additions that I wanted to cover. You know, just make sure that you utilize your B team appropriately like I do. And once again, make sure that they all have Senior contracts, SMS contracts, reserve contracts, general Adidas contracts, anything like that. And this is proof that you can have senior or senior players on senior contracts in your B team and they don't complain. Now I am playing it paying them a little bit too much money and I'm gonna make a lot of changes coming up here next season, but I'll get into that in my St. Louis City save. I just wanted to let you know that that's how I register my players. You have to have the room in your registration in order to do that but usually I have room that's why I usually only sign 27 28 players to my senior team and then I can bring up a couple players and and that's how I do it all year round okay I'm also going to be covering trades again and designated player buy downs and I'm going to cover a couple other miscellaneous things in different videos so until then just stay tuned and I have another one coming right up alright guys I wanted to cover trading one more time now they have to, the way I'm going to show you, they have to have a little bit of interest, all right? Now, you can always offer out players, but unless they have a wanted tag, and just 
this changes weekly, man. It changes daily. All right. Thomas Amain, I'm going to offer him out. First off, he is worth 1.1 million is what my things are saying. We're going to offer to MLS clubs. And we're going to go 500,000. Just it's a number to start with. All right, I'm also going to offer out Vargas because Portland wants him and I'm going to go 500,000. He's worth more than that, but don't worry about it. We'll get there. Okay, I'm going to hit continue and I'm going to have a lot of things popping up here and I'm sorry. And he rejected. That's good. I didn't want you leaving anyway, so that works out for me. Okay, there's no nobody wants him. Okay, now let's make sure that he still has. Oh my, he has a lot of interest. All right, that's cool. Now, the cool thing about this is that you can go to each individual team, which is what we're going to do, and we're going to offer a trade bid. But I'm going to do it with Vargas instead. And he should have just Portland. Yep, okay. So we're going to go in and initiate a trade with Portland. Now, if they would have sent an offer, then you could just go from there. Okay, we're going to go to player. And once again, I don't want to get rid of him. I got to find him here, Vargas. I don't want to get rid of Vargas. All right, we're going to go permanent. And we're going to just go suggest. And see what they say. All right, they they've accepted a permanent slot for Vargas. Now I want more. All right, this is where that little trick comes in. And I know some people are like, "Well, that's cheating. That's cheating." No, it's not because in real life, you know, take Man City for example. They want to buy a player from Colombia. All right, they offer ten million, and they're like, "Oh no, no, we want fifty million." And Man City comes back and says, "How about twenty million? And they say, "No, oh, no, no, we want forty. Okay, it it's the same thing here. All right. In real life, we would be sitting down in an office trying to, you know, figure this out. But here we have to do it on the computer. So, withdraw the offer. We're going to go right back in and do it again. I already know that they accept a permanent slot, which is what I want. But I also want more. All right. International slot, we're going to go permanent. All right. We can throw in some draft picks if you want. But honestly, I don't really care about that. And we're going to go some general allocation money. All right, we're going to go, let's say, 250 And we're just going to see what happens. All right, they negotiated it, which is what that means is, is that they picked way too much. All right. Or I picked way too much. All right. So we're going to withdraw the offer. And we're going to go back in here again. And you just kind of have to keep shenagling it. Now, if they outright reject it, then you have to continue and you have to do it one more time all right but you kind of see where their limits are at all right we're going to go general allocation money we're going to go 250 and see what happens okay they've accepted that all right now that's not a bad little trade honestly because that permanent slot to me is more important than anything i i'm collecting them <laughs> Now, what I could do is I could come back in here and withdraw offer and try to increase that and get as much as I can. They didn't want a first round pick. Maybe I could go uh, 400000 and just see, you know, how they feel about it. All right. But this is how you do. And then I just accept the bid or make the offer and then the trade can go through. All right. That's pretty much how you can get rid of your players. They have to have a one attack. Now, you can always just come in here and pick a random player. And he's going to get very ticked off. I can tell you that. Offer to MLS clubs. And we're going to go 502. And he's probably going to get pissed off because I'm offering him. E -e -e -e. Yep, okay. Go in here. No, no, no offers for him. So there's no interest in him. So I can't trade him. Sometimes you can offer players out like that. And they'll, they'll have a bunch of interest. And then you can just go in and find which teams are interested and force a trade like I did but don't you know don't be afraid to go in to as many teams as you can and offer and get the best deal you know Austin might value a main a lot more than Portland all right so just keep that in mind it's better when you have more the more teams you have the better deal you're gonna get all right but a lot of these teams don't have international slots much less permanent ones to give away so that's one thing that I keep in mind is how I do my trades is I'm always going for the best deal I can get and sometimes you have to force players 
you know, or force these teams to accept the trades and to start the trades by you initiating them, if that makes sense. All right, so that pretty much takes care of trading. I'm not going to cover this anymore until next year, but if you do have questions, drop me some comments. I'll be more than happy to try to, you know, help you out. All right, but stay tuned. I'm going to have more episodes or more videos attached to this one. So I'll be right back here in just a minute. All right, guys, this part is going to be talking about the designated player buy down. You are allowed to do this once a year. The restrictions apply where you have to have currently have three designated players on your team signed already. So what that what that means is I currently have no more free designated player slots. All right. I want to sign a player. In this case, Eddie Salcedo that I want to sign, but he would only come over on a designated player contract. Now I know that this is happening in football manager and in real life so I want you to know that too I, I've talked about this a little bit but I just wanted to go over it one more time okay so I offered him a DP contract and then I got an email that said you know it hits a snag after I accepted it and then it comes back and you continue it hits a snag it's basically it's telling me that I have no more slots available okay now it also says that in order to complete the deal I need to spend allo targeted allocation money to buy an existing player contract down to a senior contract okay and trust me I take advantage of this every year I honestly do by signing a young designated player and it, I love it okay but anyway it said that the person that it's want me to buy the contract down is Eddie Salcedo which it makes sense and I will show you why but first I wanted to talk about it I've already hit continue and I forgot to record it until after I hit continued but boom it, it did it. It took away the money from my allocation fund and now he's on a senior contract. So I'm going to show you what that means. Oh my, excuse me. Okay, designated contract. I have the three. And the reason that it picked him was because of his money. All right, where is he at? What is going on? Why are all these players suddenly in my team? I don't get it. Okay, all the great out players. Probably because I don't have 30. That's why. That's fine. Okay, anyway, Salceda. Oh, he's not on my team yet. Duh, he's still in the transfer. <laughs> it's just so freaking crazy. But I offered him 696000 And once again, the reason that it picked him is because these guys' salaries are higher. It takes the least, the lowest salary to buy it down, if that makes sense. Okay, and I will show you what I'm talking about right here. Where's it at? Right here. Boom. Okay. I'm um, 676, not 696. Okay, it doesn't take effect until July, and I've worked all this out. Things are good. Now, the the unusual thing is by buying it down. When you offer players senior contracts, you don't get all these extra bonuses and clauses. You you can, for I think it's important players or star players. I think you can, but not for regular starters. It doesn't allow you to do that. All right, but because it was a buy down, all this still remains intact it's really really crazy and I had to offer him a lot of things the main reason I tried to get him on a senior contract to begin with he wouldn't want it because he wanted all these extra incentives that I couldn't do that's why I had to do it on a DP but once again once a year you're allowed to buy one down but you're gonna have to keep track of this because it doesn't tell you anywhere that you've already used it up okay I did one in 2023 and now I'm doing one in 2024 I'll do one in 2025 and that's just how it works okay now you're gonna really run into a problem if you've already offered this or used this buy down and now you're not gonna be able to sign your player and you have to withdraw your contract and you're pretty much never gonna be able to sign him again all right but I wanted to cover how to buy down the DP contract and what that what it entails in order to get that message to pop up all right you have to have currently have three dps already on your team and you have to offer an incoming player a dp contract all right and you also have to have enough salary cap room you have to have enough you know just like you would if you're signing a player you also have to have enough target allocation funds which let's be honest everybody should i still have 1.5 million available after I've used a lot of it now next year I am going to use more of it automatically the game does it for you automatically at the start in January it's gonna I'm gonna use a lot more because 
different fees associated with this last buy down and things like that. But you know, you can't control that. So anyhow, I still have my three DP slots. It's the original three players, so I'm really happy about that. So, you know, but anyhow, I wanted to make sure you understood how to do this because I didn't really clarify it that well in the video and I apologize for that. Next year tutorial is going to cover a lot more and in more in depth and I'll have better examples. But this was the first time doing it, so hopefully you're learning something. But anyway, thanks again and stay tuned for some more. Alright guys, on this segment I am going to talk about how to kind of force players into a different contract that they don't want. Okay, Enos Sali is going to be a, a stud. He's from Romania. He's going to be a really good player. Um, he wanted a DP contract and as I just showed you I had to buy him down a DP contract so obviously I don't have, I can't do that. Okay, now next year I can if I want to, but we'll talk about that later. Now, I wanted him on an under-22 contract. He initially wanted 196000 on a DP contract. It would have been a young DP contract if I had the room. And he wanted all these extra incentives and bonuses and everything else. He wanted a yearly annual raise. And, you know, he had like eight or nine things on here. I just, I couldn't do it, but I wanted to sign his player. So, basically, it came down to, I had, I offered him 250000 I offered him a 200,000 sign-on fee. He only wanted like 50,000, so I kept increasing everything and increasing it. And he started to budge a little bit on his increases and bonuses and stuff like that. But it finally came down to it. We're like, okay, it's either poop or get off the pot, right? So I had to exclude everything and offered him 250,000. Offered him 200,000 on an under 22 initiative contract, and he took it. So I'm like, wow. So it doesn't always work, but his patience with the agent was really, really good. So that's another thing to take in consideration. It doesn't always work. But even now, I can show you, you know, I couldn't offer him a senior contract because he just get, didn't get, he wouldn't take it at all, and he was getting annoyed. So I went with under 22 because I do have a spot open, and he took it. So I'm extremely happy about that, all right? But I just wanted to show you that. Just because a player wants to set a certain contract doesn't mean you can't kind of shenagle your way into getting, giving them a different contract. It's the same way with signing players when you don't have that much money. You can offer them all these extra incentives and stuff, not really in the MLS, but in, in regular world football. But in this case, I managed to get what I wanted, the player I wanted, and I don't mind paying him 250000 because trust me, in a couple years, he's going to want more anyway. And the reason I went only three years and didn't have an option to extend is because it's under 22 and remember my tutorial he's 18 so in three years he's going to be 21 so therefore I can offer him an extended contract for another three years on the under 22 initiative program again because he's under 22 so that's why I went only three years because I like to lock up my stars to five years if I can you know or at least four years with an optional um, year signing but you can't always do it but anyhow I just wanted to show you that you can sign players to different contracts and kind of force them into it by being kind of rough on them sometimes but you have to make sure the patience of the agent you know and he has great respect for me because I've used him with Popescu and different things like that so it worked out great for me okay so but that's how you do that I just wanted you to kind of show that and add it to my last video so anyway guys that takes care of this and thanks for watching